very good morning my dear brethren welcome once again to this devotional we're happy and grateful to the lord for this beautiful weekend that we have had in which we were able to preach the word of god we were able to congregate as a church to be in communion in relationship with other brothers and sisters and once again very grateful to the lord for all of you that faithfully every monday through friday at the same time they watch live and follow this devotional. Today we're going to go to the book of 2 Samuel, uh, specifically in chapter 6, as of verse 12 onwards, where we're going to read a very interesting story, and I believe with the help of God that we were, are going to be able to learn some new thing that will serve it for our growth and development as believers. Let's read the Word of God, and it says as this. Now it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed Edom to the city of David with gladness. Verse 13 And so it was, when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, then he sacrificed oxen and fattened sheep. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of the Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. Now, as the ark was, uh, of the Lord came to the city of David, Michael, um, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and whirling before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. It really is the second time that David uh, has attempting to bring the ark to the city where he lives now as the city of Jerusalem or the city of David or the city of the great king. We have said several times that it's a city that receives around 70 different names and all of them are in the Bible. Now, uh, things have to be done in life decently and in order. If you see, if you read uh, carefully the first time that David wanted to carry the Ark of Jerusalem, the presence of God, and have has it near his palace and has it near his home, he failed because things were done hastily because they mounted the Ark of the Lord, a thing that should have never been done, on a car pulled by oxen. It is true that it would have arrived there faster than if they would have done a biblical way all over the shoulders of the priest. But the fact is that the ark arrived faster does not mean that things were being done well in the eyes of God. In fact, the person lost his life because of this, because seeing that the ark stumbled, he tried to stop it, and let's say with respect, he was totally struck down. And God does not want our respect. God does not need our respect. God needs our obedience and our holiness. There are people who say, oh, I respect. I do not share what you believe. I don't share what the Bible says. But I, re I respect. How many respectful people, how many people that are going, oh, like that are going to burn in hell eternally and forever? Because the respect does not make you a spiritual person, an obedient person, and holy and orderly before the eyes of God. Respect, let's say, makes you feel good because you don't cri criticize, you don't question, but then you don't change at all in your life. The ark was taken the first time in the wrong way, and it all went wrong because what starts wrong ends up wrong. If you allow me to enrich today's devotion a little bit, I want to take you to a portion of First Chronicles, chapter 15, as of verse 12 on, and it says, He said to them, and that's the King David, He said to them, You are the heads of the fathers' houses of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves you and your brethren, that you may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel to the place I have prepared for it. You, you the priest, not a cart pulled by oxen, but the priest, the ones in charge to take the ark up over their shoulders, 
and he says, for because you did not do it the first time, the Lord our God broke out against us because we did not consult him about the proper order. They did things without meditation, without reflecting, without consulting to God in the flesh. All rush. So the priests and the Levites and sanctify themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God to Israel. There is a, a way, and it's in the Bible, to do things well. If we go outside the parameters of the Bible, if we want to say, uh, act in the ministry and in our Christian life the, our own way, we can make a huge mistake. How many times, because we want to uh, a rapid growth of a congregation, we resort to a method, to a technique, the, a marketing technique, of sale technique, to some systems that maybe work in the world, but they're not the systems revealed by God in His Word. But as they want fast and immediate results, and many people have done it, because as mo the, the more people you have, the, the most important you are, then they resort to methods that at the end they bring problems, internal divisions, and people burned up and fed up with many congregations where they go out and they never want to know anything about anybody or anything. That was the, the wrong thing that David tried to take the ark and it went wrong because we can have the heart full of good intentions. But here what we're talking about is not to be sincere with ourselves or having good intentions. Here, what we're talking about is to do things decently in order, according to the biblical ordinance, according to what God has taught us. And let me tell you something very important today, because I see believing people that often they ask for confirmations. Look, biblical, what is revealed by God that is already written does not need any type of disclosure. Do, do not need any type of confirmation. It's already written. What we have to do is read it and put it into practice in our lives. There's some people that say, I want God to confirm if I have to serve Him. I want God to confirm if the word heard from God is not from is, is of Peter, it's not from God. And that attitude of constantly looking for confirmations from the written one is an excuse to do what we want to do, to not obey, to live in the flesh, and to continue to delay in time the decision and the act of obedience that God demands from each one of us. The second time that David tries to carry the Ark of Jerusalem, the Ark arrived, nobody died. Everybody was rejoicing because things were done according to the ordinance, according to what was established by the Lord in His blessed word. Do you want things to go well for you? Do you want the support and the blessing of God in your life? then ask yourself what you're doing, if what you're preaching, if what you're living and sharing has biblical foundation or is a system or a method that you have learned you, who knows where and you know that that way you're going to get quick and immediate results and you will have a great ministry and you will be famous and everyone will know you. Just ask yourself in front of God why you preach what you preach, why you do what you do, why do you live how you live. Because it could be that you get immediate results, in quotes. Like Abraham, when he had intercourse with Hagar, immediately she got pregnant, and immediately. And then, you know, he had done it for years with his own wife, Sarah, but she did not get pregnant. But in the end, both Hagar and his son, Ishmael, had to be expelled from the Abraham's home. They had results, but they were not God's results. And you can have, let's say, success, apparently success and prosperity and blessing. But where does that come from? Where is it coming from? From your effort, from your carnal flesh, from your hurries, or, or it come from a job, let's say, a patient blessed by the Lord, like the ant that works patiently without receiving recognition or applause from anyone, but prepares for winter. So that's the way the heart of the believer has to be. A person wants to do the will of God regardless of what the results are. Notice, for example, that the second time when David rejoices and dances and celebrates with joy and with musical instruments, the fact of the Ark of the Covenant was finally able to be carried in the presence of God to his own city, Jerusalem. His wife, Michael, says that he looked at him and he felt him in contempt in his heart, in her heart, logically. 
It was just, she was just like her father, a person that never had a relationship with God, not a spiritual person. She acted by the spirit of her father. She was one of those who doesn't eat, but doesn't let anyone eat either. That's why, my dear brothers, we don't have to let ourselves to be led by criticism, slander, jealousy of envy of people who want to do things, but they don't have God's blessing. The blessing of God is not bought with money. The blessing of God is not transmitted by a laying of hands. The blessing of God, you have or you don't have. Obed Edom had it because he had the presence of God. And when you have the presence of God in your life, you don't have to imitate anyone. You don't have to go travel around the world looking the magic wand so that my ministry is recognized worldwide and be a famous and recognized person. You don't need to do any of that because the presence of God is what brings true, genuine blessing and permanent blessing to your life. On the other hand, the religious people like Michael, the Pharisees, the carnal ones, they are not able to understand the changes that God produces in lives, the blessing and the true prosperity that is born from the heart of God, not from the human systems and carnal system. She acted like a carnal woman, and she was very, it was very hard for her, that, that feeling that she had for her husband. The Bible says that those that are in the spirit, they think of the things of the spirit, and those on the flesh, they think of the things of the flesh. You can, let's say, uh, explain to a blind man what colors are because a person is never able, that is blind, is never able to understand them. So a person that is not a spiritual, is per a person that does not yearn to live in the center of, the, of God cannot understand your joy, your change. Even your testimony shocks you. You tell them weird things and you're going to call and you're going to attract them. But if you talk about Christ, if you talk about the change, if you tell about the power of the word of God, they're not going to understand anything because you are living in another world. You're living in another frequency. And, and those that don't have the Holy Spirit can't understand you in their hearts. That's why today we're going to ask the Lord so to conclude this devotional today that he teaches us to do things decently and in order regardless of the popular support or not regardless of what they say let's let's make sure that in our hearts that we're doing things according to the divine design and not according to my mind or my thoughts my feelings or my emotions we will seek and yearn with all our heart always do and fulfill the will of god in our lives and i repeat in the first attempt, they had good intentions, but they weren't acting under the sovereignty and under God's direction. And that's why it went wrong. The second time, when the ark was brought, the priest all over their shoulders and not riding on a chariot drawn by animals, the presence of God, the ark of the covenant, arrived in Jerusalem. Do not follow trying things in the flesh. Submit yourself. Humiliate yourself, humble yourself, and he will exalt you when the time comes if it is his will. Let's pray, my dear brethren, this morning, asking the Lord for his blessing for this new day that starts. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for your beautiful and blessed word that inspires us and encourages and guides us and motivates us to fight the good fight every day. Lord, guard our hearts, our thoughts, our lives, to, so that we can do things in our own flesh hastily without consulting you, Lord. That we do not have envy or jealousy in our hearts to imitate anyone, but on the contrary, we will enjoy us in the blessing and prosperity of others, but also to be genuine and, and know how to wait patiently on the Lord for specific instructions and thank you because in your word we have we already have them and we don't have to rush we don't have to worry because in your word we have the specific instructions to have your presence in our lives thank you for each one of our brothers and sisters who put this day in your hands in the name of jesus amen and amen my dear brethren may the lord bless you may, may the lord keep your thoughts and our lives and our attitudes and our everything that we don't worry so much about the results but that we are going to be more concerned with pleasing and honoring and serving you 
May the Lord bless you, and I wish you a very peaceful day, a joyful day in the Lord. Blessings.